What do you think? Can Obama pull a Clinton? Well, I think he can. Um you know, show uh, clearly the leadership that the country uh, expects from him and which he's providing. Things have truly come full circle when Hillary Clinton says that President Obama can indeed pull a Clinton. <laughs> yeah, fascinating thing, though, is right after that, Rick, uh, uh, the question is asked, but he did move, uh, Clinton moved to the middle, and Hillary says, no, he really didn't change. That conventional wisdom's all wrong. Top line begins right now. Hello and welcome to ABC News Top Line. I'm Rick Klein. And I'm Jonathan Carl. Every day at noon Eastern, we're right here bringing you the latest in politics, everything you need to know. Twitter.com slash Rick Klein, Twitter.com slash John Carl. John, it's a week since the election. What do you know today, sir? Well, uh, we'll start out with upstarts. This is my favorite leadership race. Forget the Steny Hoyer versus Clyburn stuff. Forget Michelle Bachman versus Henserling. The Republican leadership has created a new leadership position, freshman representative to leadership, setting up this matchup. Tim Scott of South Carolina versus Christy Nome of South Dakota. Now this is, is, is a really a race to watch. We of course know Christy Nome here on Top yes. Line from our interview on horseback. Uh, Tim Scott is the guy that defeated Strom Thurmond's son in South, uh, in South Carolina. Clearly, whoever wins that race, major, uh, you know, major up and coming. This the is the, this is essentially the Tea Party seat at the leadership sure. table, and in both of those cases, as you see, a different portrait of the Republican yes. Party, yes. Uh, for sure. Next up today, Barry versus the volcano. This snake-bitten trip to Indonesia is going to get cut short today, but it is a homecoming of sorts for President Obama, who is visiting his, uh, his place that he spent four years of his childhood, including a school that he attended there. And interesting to see how much Indonesia has embraced him and his story, all these great examples of uh, even commercials featuring uh, Barack Obama lookalikes. Yeah, I, I no doubt this may be the place where his approval rating is higher. Than, <laughs> this may be his Albania. You remember uh, Albania was the place where, where President Bush was most popular yes. uh, during his lowest moment. So uh, certainly a welcome sign. Oh, Next up, Indonesia. the decider's decisions. Uh, George W. Bush, uh, you remember he was the former president, uh, still is the former president, out with one of the most incredible publicity launches launches for a book in the history of publishing uh, all over NBC, uh, our, our rival network. But very interesting interview with Matt Lauer. I think most interesting, Rick, for how little the former president has changed. He is George W. Bush, will remain George W. Bush. Here's what he said about waterboarding. I, I will tell you this, uh, using those techniques saved lives. My job was to protect America, and I did. I don't think anyone was expecting introspection <laughs> in, in this particular thing. Yes. No, did. actually, I was wrong. Whoops, you know? I yeah, made that one. Yeah, no, no, yeah. it is it is an interesting window into the yeah. former president who's got a little bit of a surge going on for himself, obviously, with the book and these interviews after the election. It's not, yep. not bad timing for him and for sales. Yeah. And finally today, the politics of Palin. Sarah Palin has gotten only more active in the political sphere in the days since the election. She seems to be everywhere. She is uh, criticizing the Federal Reserve. She's criticizing the Wall Street Journal's reporters at one point. And and even better than that, Bristol Palin is handicapping that race for mayor of Wasilla. Take a look. Do you think he'd be a good mayor? Do you think he knows about politics? No, I don't think he <laughs> It is an important position, and um, I don't think he knows what he's getting himself into. No. Of course, Bristol referring to Levi Johnston. Yeah, this is the second day in a row on top line we've mentioned Wasilla. Wasilla, big, big, very big, not as big a place, but big on top line. Yes, yes, uh, huge. And, and you know, I, I just add to your, your Palin obsession, uh, <laughs> must read editorial in the Wall Street Journal uh, about Sarah Palin's statements on the uh, on Bernanke. And, Bernanke. And, and, and here's what they say, I mean, it just, you should frame this, Rick. Uh, <laughs> the former Alaskan governor showed sound political and economic instincts by inveighing forcefully against Federal Reserve latest round of quantitative easing of course and then the editorial goes on to say that she exhibited a more sophisticated knowledge of monetary policy than any Republican this side of our friend representative Paul Ryan I love it and I, and I look forward to Sarah Palin's response via Twitter <laughs> to all of these we begin today's show up in New York and Long Island to be particular about it Randy Altshuler who's the Republican candidate in the first congressional district in New York holds a slight edge right now against Congressman Tim Bishop and and uh, Mr. Altshuler I want to ask you first of all uh, how much longer is this going to last what's the latest read on, on when this race is going to be decided officially you know, it's not quite, we're not quite sure right now. Uh, the Bishop campaign is asking for a hand recount of all 185,000 votes. 
So if that's granted, uh, we could be here forever, but hopefully we'll get to a speedy resolution of this. And, and right now, give us the very latest. You're at what, 400 votes up? I'm up 383 votes. Uh, this is after all the votes have been uh, counted with the exception of the absentee and the affidavit ballots. So there are about 11,000 of those outstanding. And hopefully we'll get to reading those next week or the end of this week. And then we can know quickly what the results, final results are. But so far we're ahead by 383 votes. And, and I, I got I don't imagine your working assumption is that you're going to prevail on this. But what, what is the what is the National Party doing for you? You have a contact with them, the NRCC. Are they helping out in terms of uh, preparing it for legal battles? Yeah, they've been terrific. We've gotten a lot of support. I spoke with Eric Cantor right away. Uh, they've been sending legal support. They've been helping us raise money. You know, this is unfortunately going to be an expensive battle. Uh, and I'm also in touch with them about, you know, activities for a freshman orientation, uh, you know, knock on wood if we're successful here. All right. So the fascinating thing about this is you are not even elected yet. We don't know if you will be elected, but but you already have a challenger for 2012. <laughs> I do. It's Alec Baldwin. I actually like his TV show. Uh, but apparently, uh, and who knows if it's true or not, Soros is close to him for saying that if, uh, if I am victorious, that he's going to run against me in 2012. So uh, this is the Remember, coffee is for closers. I, yeah. the, uh, it, and one of the fascinating subplots, Alec Baldwin presumably would run as a Democrat. I would think that his candidate, though, Jack Donaghy, probably a Republican. You make it a primary challenge in addition to a general, no? <laughs> one can only imagine. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. We still got to finish this. Uh, and we, you know. <laughs> Knock on wood, we'll have a successful outcome, but still ways to go here. Are, are you tracking, I imagine because you talk about orientation, are you tracking at all the leadership race right now? What do you think about Michelle Bachman trying to join leadership? Do you think that's a good thing for the, for the party to have a, a Tea Party representative at the table? You know, to be honest, I've really been heads down in my own race. Uh, lots of activity here, a lot of things that we have to get accomplished. So uh, that's really been my focus. And, and at least until the absentee and, and affidavit votes are counted, that's where I'll remain focused. Well, well what, what, do you, what do you think? I mean, you, you're representing, if you get elected, you'd be representing a, a, a district that is not exactly, uh, you know, right-wing Tea Party central. Uh, are, 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 you, are you concerned about the potential direction of, of, of your party as we move forward, if you see somebody like Michelle Bachman in leadership, or even if you don't? No, listen, you know, there, there we have an active Tea Party here on, on eastern Long Island. They were incredibly supportive of me during the campaign. Uh, so I think they're an important element of the electorate. And I think they, you know, they have a lot in common with the Republican Party. And you know, we need to take into account their positions and their views. They represent a lot of the frustrations that Americans have across this country. So uh, I'm excited about their participation. I'm excited about the movement. And you know, even here on, on Long Island, it's been an important one. Whether or not you're successful, it's been a, it's a big year for New York Republicans in the House. Less less success at the statewide level. Obviously, the two Senate races and the gubernatorial race. We had on George Pataki yesterday and talked a little bit about how the 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 top of the ticket was probably a drag on Republicans. But what what seems to have gone right at your level and with the other House uh, the House pickups that uh, that are already in place elsewhere in New York State? Well, it looks like you know we picked up at five races that have been counted. Uh, we've got another race, Anne Marie Burkle, who looks like she's going to win her race, and hopefully we will as well. So that would bring us up to seven, which I think is the most Republican pickups in any state uh, during this election. So that's terrific for us. Unfortunately, less success uh, statewide, and we have some work to do. You know, we need to rebuild the party here statewide. I think there's a lot of room for that. Uh, people want an alternative to the Democrats. They've done a disastrous job in Albany. Uh, they've racked up huge debts here uh, for the state, uh, completely mismanaged our budget. So. If we can get our act together, uh, I think we can be very appealing to the electorate and we can do well on a statewide basis too. All right, Randy Elshuler, the Republican candidate in the first congressional district up on my native Long Island. Good luck to you as uh, this overtime contest continues, one of a handful of races that's still out there. Thank you. And thank you. If, if people could, uh, my website is www.joinrandywithay.org. Uh, we'd love for them to come and learn more about our race. All right, Randy that's with the plug Randy in with the top line. There we Thank go. you. Uh,